Welcome back to the show. The boss of private bank Coots has sensationally quit as the fallout from the Nigel Farage bank account scandal continues. Peter Flavel's resignation comes just a day after Dame Alison Rose was fired as the NatWest Group CEO for leaking a fake story about the former UKIP leader's Coots account to the BBC. Gosh, wheels within wheels. Curiouser and curiouser. Joining me in the studio, Michael Crick, who wrote a book about Nigel Farage, my goodness me, and Gwen Toler, former Director of Communications at the Brexit Party. I'll start with Gwen because I spoke to him only yesterday I mean, I and I did say, didn't I, this rapacious thirst for heads on stakes, severed heads, heads on platters, you know, everyone must go, all must fall on their swords. Haven't we got the gist of it now? I said with Dame Alison, isn't that more than enough. We all know why she's gone. It's surely never going to happen again. And you said, no, more, more must fall, more must be sacrificed, didn't you? And look what's happened. I think it's more a question of more must take responsibility. Um, yes, I mean, basically, Dame Alison Rose was caught with a smoking gun, but it seems like uh, the boss of Coots was in a completely different building at the time. Um, Sadly, the major domo is yet to go, and that, of course, is Howard Davis, who has now lost two CEOs, which is um, unfortunate, or possibly worse than unfortunate. So, Just, just I, explain I to people who aren't following this as closely as you, Gwen, who Howard Davis is and why he should go. Well, Howard Davis is the overall boss of the board of uh, NatWest. He, is to, he, he was the person whose decision it was to back Alison Rose wholeheartedly six hours before she had to go. Um, his judgment is clearly at odds with uh, normal people. Um, and as such, I think that, I, I wouldn't say everybody in the board has to go, but he certainly, his judgment is, is as skew if as hers, and his failures are far greater, I think, than the boss of Coots itself. Michael Crick, is he right? Well, I do think the non-executive directors of Nat West, uh, who, of whom Sir Howard Davis is the leader, should be asking themselves, why did we let it go on so long? Why didn't we get a grip on this? I mean, it went on for, mm. what, two or three weeks, this story. Mm -hmm. And it was obvious from the start that they'd made a series of errors. It's now clear that they made an extraordinary series of errors. I mean, the worst of all is in that Coots report about Nigel Farage, the yes. one that, that uh, Nigel put out, um, there's actually a line in there that says, well, of course, if we are to um, end Nigel Farage's bank account, uh, he will uh, make a big... If he has a platform and he'll make a big issue of this. Mm -hmm. And they knew what was <laughs> going to happen. Yeah. And, of course, they've ended up doing a thousand times more damage to their reputation mm -hmm. uh, than Fa Nigel Farage actually having a, a Coots bank account uh, was ever going to cause. I mean, hardly anybody knew he had a bank, Coots bank account. I don't know. I've written a book on the guy. I couldn't remember whether it, was, whether it was Coots or someone else. It's interesting, by the way, that it shows how this is the sort of contradiction of Farage. The, the, he's the establishment rebel, you know, the rebel who wants to join the establishment and have an account with banks and uh, with Coots and, and, yes. and join uh, gentlemen's clubs and so on. Yeah, but the, 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 the huge responsibilities do still lie with the, the NatWest board. But, I mean... So many people in that building, or the two buildings that they're in, uh, were involved in this. This committee that then decided, this dreadful report they wrote, it looks reads like it's written by so a 12-year-old. Revise for some people watching and listening yes. the sorts of things that they elected to say about their own customer, well, they were, Nigel they was, Farage. They were quoting things... In fact, they were quoting one of my stories all about mm. what Nigel Farage, you know, had, 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 how he had allegedly been singing Hitler youth songs when he was at school, you know, f 45 years ago. How would I they mean, even I, know that, though? Well, well, it, well that's, it, it, it was what people who were at school with him told me. But it's not relevant in any way whatsoever to whether he should be allowed to have a, a, a bank account with Coots now. No. Um, and some people would argue it's not even relevant to his politics now. Um, but, but there was a whole load... I mean, they were just picking up everything they could possibly... Some stuff was wrong. I mean, for instance, they accused Farage of um, supporting the, uh, the claim that uh, uh, leaving the EU would, uh, enable, would bring uh, an extra £340 million to the, a week to the health service. You remember that one? Mm. Well, that was actually by the other uh, Brexit campaign who argued that. Yeah. Farage was pretty sceptical about that claim and pretty annoyed about it, uh, if I remember right. G G Gwen was closer to events. Mm -hmm. the, the, the whole dossier was rubbish, but it's the principle, isn't yes. it? The principle well, I, that you can ban you... somebody from having a bank account and 
the, the other subject we have barely discussed mm. is the fact that, you know, what is it, nine or ten other banks have turned him down as well. That is the worrying thing. All if right. he was simply able to walk into Barclays or something, but it appears not. I want to ask you both the same question. I'll, I'll ask Wayne first. Uh, yeah. Some people listening to this, some people reading about this, some people thinking about this story might be wondering why they have to care less about Nigel Farage and his bank account and Coots, and it's all very posh and it all pertains to him and there's his name all over the place. They either like him or they don't like him. They think they know what he stands for. They don't think they know what he stands for. But they're listening to this again, yet again, because this story does go on and on and on, you've got to admit, mm -hmm. and thinking, oh, for God's sake, it's one guy in his bank account. Why do I have to keep hearing about it the whole time? So, Gawain and Michael, I'm going to ask you both. You are both utterly convinced, as are so many people now throughout the political spectrum and way beyond, that this is not about one man and his bank account, but about a very important principle. So, Gawain, what yes. is that principle? I mean, what was very interesting, within a few days of Farage announcing this, 28 days ago, within a few days, a group of 10,000 people have got together on Facebook, all of whom have been debanked. And I hate the neologism of debanked. I've been thrown out and have had their banking uh, facilities stopped. Um, so it's not just Farage. I know somebody who, uh, one of our other uh, Brexit Party MEPs, who she had her bank stopped, her husband, who's a businessman, had his bank stopped, and her 17-year-old daughter had her bank stopped. You have the business of Dominic Lawson and his uh, disabled daughter having her bank stopped, and the charity she runs had bank stopped. And this goes down, and it's small businesses up and down the country. What has happened is, by some bizarre quirk of fate, the, the woke brigade within Coots and NatWest and that strange committee that Michael was just talking about, um, they have turned Nigel Farage into a consumer champion. Mm. Because right now, <laughs> he's now fighting not just for himself, but the tens of thousands of people up and down this country, small businesses, who have had their ability to function destroyed by whim, it seems. Because, of course, when the bank closes your account, it says it doesn't have to tell you. Mm -hmm. Now, I can, I can assure you that some people I know... <laughs> Pardon me. Some people I know are putting together a, 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 a site and a campaign that anybody who has been debanked in this way will be shown how to put up a subject access request, will be able to put those, ask those questions of the bank and have them answered. Why did you debank me? All right, Gwen, thank you. I mean, Gwen's answered really a different question. That's not the right. question I, I asked, but he's answered a, a, it's a jolly good answer to the question, is it only Nigel Seems Farage? A pretty good answer and to the me. answer is, yeah. well, I thought yeah. that was good. Yeah. The answer yeah. was, yeah. you know, no, it's not only Nigel Farage. It isn't yeah. just one man in his bank account. It's 10,000 people and maybe more. That's the answer to the question, how many other people? But my question was, what is the principle here? Why should anyone care about this? Why is it not just a matter for Nigel well, Farage the and the other 10,000 people to whom it's happened and everybody else can go about their business and not have to worry about it or think about it? Explain why it matters, please. Because in the modern world, you can't live without a bank account in the same way you can't live without water. Mm -hmm. And if water companies said, oh, well, we're not providing you with any water, we don't like your political views, we would all think that was dreadful. There's a limited number of banks that you can bank with. Yeah. And if they all say you're not coming with us, what do you do? There's all sorts of places these days that don't take cash anymore. Mm -hmm. In fact, there are all sorts of young people I know who never use cash. Mm -hmm. Now, if you, if you rely on digital transfers and, and, and banking... Uh, in the modern world, as we do, to, to close it down for somebody is like chopping their, chopping their limbs off. It really is uh, 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 hugely important, this principle. And I, you know, I, I, Farage's, a lot of Farage's politics are not mine, but I think on this, he's absolutely right. And he is, and I think the way in which the left and liberals have said, ha ha, serves him right, we never liked him anyway, they are absolutely, uh, I deplore that, I really do. They should be interested in this principle as much as people who support Farage uh, and Brexit. It is really, really important. And thank goodness the government is getting to grips with it at a time when the Labour Party, frankly, doesn't seem very interested. And thank goodness you're here. Now, anybody who <laughs> doubted why we're covering this 
subject will know once and for all, <laughs> not just Nigel Farage, at least 10,000 other people, and it's not just him and his bank account. We're talking about a matter of really important principle. You need a bank account. Everybody does. They should not be able to sever you from your bank account because they don't like the cut of your jib. It pretty much boils down to that, right, Michael? Indeed. I mean, if you wanted to buy a house and you suddenly turned up these days and said, well, you know, here's £100,000 in cash, you just couldn't do it, you know? And, and, and Nigel Farage says that actually he said to Coots, OK, I'll be turning up with a, a security van and taking all my cash out. Yeah. Well, actually, he wouldn't have been... He would have found it very difficult to spend that cash in the modern world. Gentlemen, <laughs> thank you both very much indeed.